Ladies and gentlemen, a little bit into the next hour, Mark Dice joins us up on screen for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. Can geoengineering put the freeze on global warming? Oh, they are chemtrailing. Can airplanes spray aluminum dioxide, barium salts, and other things in there to save us? Oh, see, the chemtrails are real. Uh, now they're not denying it. They're rolling it out that they were saving us with this 16-year-long secret program. Now, joining us is Mark Dice, author of Big Brother, The Orwellian Nightmare Come True. And I think it's the most powerful book he's ever written. We carry all of his books at InfoWars.com. But we've uh, teamed up uh, with Mark when he wanted us to contact us a few months ago with this idea. Uh, in the first uh, three and a half months of its uh, publication, we're going to be the exclusive place to get Big Brother, the Orwellian Nightmare Come True. It starts shipping, what, the 21st of this month uh, and a little over two weeks from now. So get your pre-orders in. They have been printed and they're on their way to us right now. Big Brother, the Orwellian Nightmare Come True. So many people know about Big Brother and Orwell, but this illustrates and basically analyzes the book and shows how we've really gone beyond that in many respects in this social engineering. Again, it's available at InfoWars.com. When you get the book, it also supports Mark. It also supports what we're doing, and it helps get the word out to everybody. You may already know about all this. Get the book. Give it to friends and family. We also have some combo deals where you can get my videos at less than half off when you get them with the book. So available at InfoWars.com. Or if you want to call, tell the folks here at the office you want Big Brother, the Orwellian Nightmare, come true, 888-253-3139. Uh, Mark Dice, great to have you on with us. Hey, thanks. It's a big day. It's Defriend Day today on Facebook, We the day when we clean up our friends list and delete the strangers and scumbags. We can get into some of the details about that and the other Orwellian aspects of Facebook. But, you know, I've, I've been making the comparisons. Everybody, uh, this audience has been drawing comparisons, seeing the comparisons between what we are experiencing in our world and Orwell's book. So I've compiled about 300 pages of them, and it's it's very, very scary what's going to be coming around the corner here uh, just in a few months and in a few years. I mean, we have everything we've been talking about now and, and cited in, in trade journals or, or maybe just things that are, are being implemented or working on patents, pat patent applications. All of this stuff is coming to a fruition, uh, to the Orwellian nightmare. And if we don't all come together and wake up and stand up and come together and educate ourselves, our communities, get over the fear, we're going to live in the Orwellian nightmare. We're That's right. We should be afraid of doing nothing. Go back to 1997 when I got arrested protesting the thumb scanners, and I predicted they're going to be in grocery stores. They're going to be at the, 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 the gym. They're going to be to get your school lunch because I'd read the government documents. Now it's becoming ubiquitous. It's everywhere. The face scanning cameras, the license plate reading cameras, the control grid is going into place right now, but just like we're starting to defeat the TSA, and just as even the mainstream media is decrying what they're doing, if we make these other Orwellian issues important as well, we can start turning the tide against it. We don't have a choice, and hence your manifesto, Big Brother, the Orwellian nightmare come true, Mark. I salute you on this book. This, the, Your other three books are excellent. This blows them away. You know, this, this is not a conspiracy theory. There's no conspiracy theories in the book. I'm sorry if I'm just talking about patents and, and trade journals where they're saying that they're already testing cameras in Holland and they're, they're ready to implement them in London for the Olympics in 2012 where they listen to the streets. And if you yell at someone or if the cameras detect that your voice is angry, uh, the, the pitch, the volume, the tempo. That's already been put in in England. Yeah, they're already testing. This is already coming out. So we don't have much time before we're living in the Orwell nightmare and and it's it's very creepy the social structure the control of information the perpetual state of war the per, per, the personification of the party the telescreens the snitch culture the, the, the degraded and corrupted social relations there's a global revolution against every canon of freedom telescreens going in 9000 locations saying spy on your neighbors forbes comes out today and admits docs reveal tsa plan to body scan uh, uh, pedestrians, train passengers, they're already doing it. It's all happening. 
Listen, there's a case in India of a woman that was convicted of murder because a machine read her mind and said that she had experiential knowledge of the murder scene. So there's technology coming out that or is already out, I guess. They're just unrolling newer and more advanced versions that supposedly reads your mind and can allegedly determine whether you have seen or heard something. So the, these machines have already convicted people of murder in foreign countries, and it's coming here. The Orwellian nightmare is going to come true if we do not all stand up, wake up, come together, stop being afraid, expose the false flag terrorism, and come together and restore the republic. Well, Mark, let's walk through your book and the different chapters and, and why this is such an important uh, tome. Well, let's, let's start off with Facebook Defriend Day. There's a whole section in the book about Facebook. And again, much of this audience may be familiar with this. So this is for the masses. This is for the people that aren't aware of these issues or maybe the people that are just starting to care about what's going on. And so we're announcing Facebook Defriend Day. Just the time to step back and think about the social implications of Facebook. People, there are police that are going on Facebook pages and arresting students for underage drinking using the photos that they've posted as the evidence. So just imagine the police are going on Facebook pages, finding photos of students, and then tracking them down and arresting them for underage drinking. This is Big Brother. This is what we're trying to fight. So Facebook Defriend Day, there's an article on Infowars.com that kind of details some of the Orwellian aspects of Facebook, not to mention just the, the social implications of the narcissism and the self-absorption that these websites, these supposed social networking sites, have created. But let's take another look at some of the, some of the creepy aspects that Facebook has is. Before we do that, let me just add, it's like Google. You think you're going to the Oracle to get information, but it's actually tracking what you're thinking, what you're doing, where you're going to eat, what movies you're watching. It's building a detailed psychological breakdown on you. The same thing's happening with Facebook, and you've got the founder of it calling his users idiots, saying that they trust him, that they're morons. Yeah, and there's new facial recognition software that's out that's going to identify everybody in every photo that's posted on Facebook, on the Internet. There were apps that were created. I think they've been pulled from the app stores now from Android and, and iPhone. There's, there's apps that are created where you can take a photo of some random stranger, and using facial recognition software, it will search Facebook, MySpace, the Internet, and find that person. That's creepy. That's the really nightmare. That's what we're going to have to start learning about. What are these social implications here? And, and what are we going to do? Are we going to live in, the, in a kind of world like this? And, and the way that they're rolling it out is through the fear of false flag terrorism, through dumbing us down, eroding the culture, uh, the, painting foreign countries as enemies. Everybody in Iran must be an enemy. It's, there's so many parallels between uh, 1984 and, and our, our world here. Just, just listen to what Orwell wrote in 1949. He, he says, quote, with all their cleverness, they had never mastered the secret of finding out what another human being was thinking. Well, Orwell was right on a lot of stuff, but he didn't, he didn't think about the mind-reading machines now. That the are, most that dangerous time was when you were asleep, when you might uh, you know, give yourself up in a word. You know, yeah, he talks about, listen, listen to this, I mean, the consciousness of being at war and therefore in danger makes the handing over of all power to a small caste seem natural, unavoidable condition of survival. I mean, this is, this is prophetic, nearly. I mean, here, here we have, just let me go through another couple shocking quotes that I've pulled out of this book, and, and they fit right in with, with what's going on in our society today. We have, quote, in the past, no government had the power to keep its citizens under constant surveillance. The invention of print, however, made it easier to manipulate public opinion, and the film and radio carried the process further. We have become a culture of corrupt morons, but, but there's a glimmer of hope. Alex, I see the V for Victory campaign. I see everybody getting out there and educating people about these issues, poster campaigns, educational outreaches, and so I see the glimmer of hope here, and if we can just continue to educate people, get the word out, we can come together and... Well, and resistance, you're saying it. If we stand up, if we speak out, if we rebuke all this tyranny, it will fail. But if we decide it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to go into this tyranny, we're going to lose. Resistance is victory. A, a false manufactured sense. This seems to be an organic uh, Orwellian 
implementation of this technology, but it's it's been pulled and prodded behind the scenes from from the Rockefeller Foundation, who actually recruited the head of uh, the head of the Identix, the number one facial recognition software company. They it was recruited in 1991. Uh, this guy Joseph Attic by the Rockefeller University, and he was funded by DARPA to create the facial recognition systems. And, and we've been talking about these. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Facial recognition systems have actually been tested 10 years ago in the Super Bowl. They, and this they, is going to be used to buy and sell. It's going to be your new ID. The government, the social engineers admit this. And then if you're not a good globalist it doesn't matter what you have to pay for your food with or your house you're just shut down and that's what homeland security has said you're gonna have to have tsa approval to own a gun to have a job this is total control it's total control and let's look at the snitch culture everybody's being turned into a paranoid uh, person that there's terrorists around every corner the if you see something say something campaign from walnard it, it's it's becoming so unbelievably absurd that Blatant. it's time to, to start standing up to speak truth to power and and if it's so hard sometimes to articulate some of these issues to people when you're new to this or when you're trying to introduce somebody to this kind of information and so the YouTube videos the books these are the ways to, to eloquently and powerfully communicate these these complex ideas in a, in a pretty simple way well, the new book, and we're going to walk through it and, and, and show the modern-day parallels that even surpass Orwell's Nightmare Vision. It's Big Brother, the Orwellian Nightmare Come True by Mark Dice, only available for the next three and a half months, and it's going to be everywhere. But if you want to distribute it, you want to carry it in your bookstore, give us a call, 888-253-3139. You want one copy, two copies, there's discounts on that. Help the alternative media fund ourselves, but most importantly, get a powerful tool to further educate yourself and others. It's available at InfoWars.com. Shifting gears, but continuing to look at propaganda. Fox News, a whole bunch of other publications are asking the question, is Charlie Sheen's world-setting Twitter presence an elaborate stunt? And uh, they're asking all over the news, did he stage all this wild stuff he's saying on air? Uh, is this all fake? And, and people are asking me this because it all started on my show last Thursday. And the answer is no. The Charlie Sheen I know what, never, you know, what, never did drugs or alcohol in front of me, was focused, was really into politics. Then he went on a seven-month party, kind of relapsed. Uh, then he's now completely off everything and is wild. You know, the media says having a manic episode is pretty normal when you kick hard alcohol and drugs overnight. But he's saying, I'm alive, and I'm not going to pull punches, and I don't care what you think of me. And so he's a, deliberately just being super bold in people's face. Because they canceled the rest of a season of Two and a Half Men, that's why he's mad. Okay, so for the media out there, it's real. Okay, it's real. And people last week said, well, why did that happen on your show? Well, I was getting him on to talk about the fact that I've seen him, you know, when, when the nurse comes and urine testing, he is clean. I was with him a few weeks ago. And then it turned into what you saw, and I didn't know what to think of it. But uh, now uh, Fox News and others report uh, that the sheening of America in less than a week, troubled actor Charlie Sheen becomes country's top pop culture icon. And uh, now, uh, you know, what are we going to see from Charlie in the future? Well, I hope he stays clean. I think you're going to see uh, more from him on politics right now. He's not doing that. Uh, but certainly it brought tens of millions of new people to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I got to go on The View and talk about Building 7 being a controlled demolition, the banker dictatorship, the TSA, the Federal Reserve. Uh, I've, I've been able to do that on many other channels. And so overall, I just hope he makes it out of all this because he, he, the, the whole fight with CBS, all of it is very, very real. Mark, guys, I haven't asked your view on this. I'm going to ask it live on air. What do you think? It's very interesting, and of course the conspiracy theories are going around that this was a planned stunt, but you can't plan something like that. I mean, and there's no way, and even if this was some sort of a planned stunt between you and Charlie, I mean, Charlie would be, during his, in his interviews, would be talking about some New World Order issues. I mean, this I think it just kind of blew up uh, into some mess, you know, it's, I guess Charlie Sheen can't go on the air and talk, uh, you know, talk negatively about his bosses without being accused of being crazy. And it's fascinating, too, when the show is basically about, about the real Charlie Sheen. And I've seen the show a few times, and he, he's a womanizer. He, he jokes about 
paying prostitutes in the show. So, I mean, the, the character Charlie in the show is, you know, kind of a scumbag.